very good morning students standard 6 subject science today we are going to start with the next lesson that is lesson number 10 force and types of force children in the previous lesson we have studied about the motion and types of motion so in that lesson what we have studied motion means what when the any object is showing a movement a continuous displacement of an object is called as a motion so when the object is in motion when we are applying a force to it right that force can be from the different ways correct so in this lesson we are going to study what is the force and the various types of force okay now here you can observe the various pictures children what you can observe in this observe the first picture what the person is doing he is rowing a boat for rowing a boat to give a movement to this boat he has to apply a force on it so how he is applying a force by using a oar so he is pushing the oar back to the backward side so that he can move the boat to the forward side right so in this way he is applying a force to the object in the next picture you can see that the person is pressing the sponge so when he press the sponge you can see with the help of a finger in the less amount we have to apply a force the next picture to break the stick also we have to apply a force in the next picture you can see a bullock cart in this bullock cart bullocks are applying a force to drag it to the forward and wheels help it to move easily correct in the next picture you can see the boy is playing with the tire and to give a motion to the tire what he is doing he is applying a force with the help of a stick in the last picture children you can see the boy is kicking a ball what we have studied in the le last lesson that the ball is in motion but how ball gets a motion when a boy kicks a ball so at when the ball gets kicked by a boy he applied a force on it so we in this lesson we will study about the various kinds of a force and how it works on the various objects so children we do a lot of work in our day to day life for example we pick up our bag we go to the school we take a bath we ride a cycle right we sometimes lift a bags we go for shopping we carry a luggages right so to do certain activities we have to apply a force so in our day to day life we do many actions such as lifting, pulling, riding a bicycle and stopping it at times, pushing a load. So do, to do all such a task, it is necessary to apply a force. Knowingly, unknowingly, what we are doing? We are applying a force to that object to perform that task. So force is applied to pull it or to push it or to carry any object, it in a, any manner. So no object can change its position on its own children have you seen that any bag or any book is moving by itself or your refrigerator comes to your living room by walking no it never happens so what happens if you want to move its place from one place to the another if you want to change its position we have to apply a force on it right so no object can change its position on its own force is required to move an object force is used to change the direction of an object in motion or to stop it children when you are riding a bicycle what your body does with the help of your feet you are pedaling it so while pedaling it unknowingly you are applying a force to the pedals with the help of that bicycle starts moving means your bicycle starts riding and when you need to change the direction, what you have to do, you have to change the direction with the help of a handle. So from your hands, you are applying a force to the handle to the different direction 
to give a different direction to the object correct and if you want to stop the bicycle what you are doing you are applying a brake with your hands again here you are applying a force on the brakes and also with the help of a feet by touching it on the ground we tries to stop the bicycle correct so from this what we can understand bicycle does not move by its own how it moves when we apply a force on it it starts moving or we can change the direction of a bicycle by applying a force on it children many a times what you does in the school while playing with the pen which has a spring inside you remove the spring and you pull it apart so children tell me what happens when you hold the two ends of the spring and pull them apart you must have observed that the spring lost its shape and it has become bigger in size correct so when we applied a force on the spring it will lost its shape so the shape of the spring changes the original shape is lost and the pulled spring acquires a new shape and all this happens because of the force applied by your hands in the next picture children you can see a person is hammering a red piece of a iron correct so you must have seen sometimes when that the blacksmiths are hammering a hot iron pieces correct so what happens when they hammer it after hammering a hot iron pieces the iron piece will change its shape so when a blacksmith hammers a red hot piece of iron it changes its shape so from this what we can understand when the force is applied on any object it may change its shape now children we will study the various types of forces there are various types of forces such as muscular force mechanical force gravitational force magnetic force frictional force and electrostatic force in the muscular force what we are going to study that how the when the force is applied with the help of muscles it is called as a muscular force so children here you can see the person is lifting a weight you must have seen your younger uh, elder brother or your father doing a exercise while doing a exercise they lift a weights with the help of their hands correct so when they are lifting a weight you can see their muscles are moving correct so with the help of muscles they are able to perform that task so what is applied here a muscular force so the force applied with the help of muscles is called muscular force so children do we applied muscular force only for lifting the weight in the gym or while performing the exercise no we are doing various task with the help of a muscular force for example children when you pick up your heavy luggages or a bags what happens your hands required a muscular force to applied on the bag so that you can lift the bag correct to lift anything or to hold any heavy weights what happens your muscles are applying a force on that object so in that time at that time muscular force is applied the force applied with the help of muscles is called muscular force so in this way we does a lot of task with the help of a muscular force the next type of force is mechanical force children mechanical force is what when the force applied by means of machine is called a mechanical force children nowadays we are doing a lot of task with the help of machines for example to clean the clothes or for uh, sieving the clothes for uh, wiping the floor correct various machines are there which we use in our day to day life we use different machines for doing many task you must have observed that some machines are working on electricity or fuel but there are certain machines which does not require a electricity or a fuel correct but those are also machine for example a take a simple example 
children nowadays many uh, ladies are using a mop for cleaning the floor correct that mop how it works it does it work on the electricity or a fuel no it works on with the help of a muscular force we have to apply our force on that mop to clean the floor so it is a simple example of a machine which works on a muscular force but there are certain machine which works on electricity or a fuel for example washing machine mixer grinder sieving machine dish washer all these machines are working on electricity as well as tractor car all these machines are working on fuel so such a machines which works on uh, automatically are called are working on the basis of mechanical force so sewing machine electric pump washing machine mixer all these are the examples of the machines which works on mechanical force so the force applied by means of machine is called a mechanical force so here you can see that the work which is done with the help of machines is here the force is applied by the machines correct so to clean the clothes the force is not applied by any human being it is applied by the machines which works on the electricity correct so the force applied by means of machine is called a mechanical force now students tell me what happens when you jump up yes you come down or are you flying in the sky no you are coming down your body comes down near to the earth why it happens the earth pulls all the objects towards itself and this is called a gravitational force children when you are playing with the ball when you are throwing a ball on the upward direction after reaching to the certain height what happens it will come down again why it happens or you must have seen that the fruits are falling down or the leaves when they come out from the plant it falls on the ground so why it is happening because of the force applied from the earth so the earth pulls all the objects towards itself and it is called as a gravitational force the force applied by the earth to pull objects towards itself is called gravitational force children do you know who invented about the gravitational force do you know who is this person he is a great scientist sir isaac newton he discovered gravitation in the 17th century he has not only discovered regarding the gravitational force but he contributed a lot in the field of science and technology do you know children do you know he invented calculus provide a clear understanding of optics but his most significant work had to do with forces and especially with the development of universal law of gravity he also given a law of motion the earth's gravitational force acts in direction opposite to that of an object moving upwards hence the speed of that object goes on decreasing till in the end it becomes zero so he explained us how the objects come down after reaching to the certain height what happens when we throw a ball because of the muscular force the ball gets a motion and it started moving to the upward direction but when that force becomes zero as it acts upward or opposite to the gravitational force at a certain point it becomes a zero and it comes down hence the speed of that object goes on decreasing till in the end it becomes zero then the object starts falling down instead of going up any further while falling its speed goes on increasing all time due to gravitational force children to understand about the gravitational force we will perform one small experiment for this you need to take a bucket of water and a stone take a small stone and a bucket full of water now first you will drop the stone into the bucket from a less height 
for example 20 cm and observe the sound which comes when the stone drops into the water okay and in the next time what you will do you increase the height and drop the stone for example now this time drop the stone from a hundred centimeter again observe the sound which comes now which incident or which time the sound is more louder in the second time when we are throwing a stone from the larger height why does it happen from the gravitational force what we have studied that when the object starts falling down, instead of going up any further, what happens while falling down, it goes on increasing its speed. So when we are throwing us or when we are dropping a stone from the less height, it will not gain a that much speed. And as it is, has a less speed, it will strike on the water with a less force. And hence, the sound which occurs at that time will be less. In the next time when you are dropping the stone from the more height as it has a larger height as compared to the first one it will in gain a more speed as it has a more speed it will have a more amount of force in it and when it drops in the bucket it will make a more larger sound than the earlier one. Now, let's study the another example. Here you can see a man is carrying a load. In the first picture, you can see the bag is empty means what? The weight must be less. And in the second picture, you can see the bag is full or the sack is full means the sack must be having a more weight. So what you can see in that picture in the first one where the sack is empty the person does not need to apply a lot of force to carry the weight whereas in the second picture you can see a person needs to apply a greater force to carry the weight. So from that what we can understand that a sack which looks empty and the other one which is full what we can notice from that the gravitational force on the empty sack is less and uh, means what it has a less weight and hence the force applied to carry that weight needs to be very less whereas the sack which is full has a more gra gravitational force applied on it means it has a more weight and for for that to carry that sack a greater force must be applied so from this what we can understand children that the greater force must be applied to lift a greater weight. Children, you will also observe that sometimes when you are coming to the school for any picnic or for any function, you does not carry the heavy things in your bag. That time, you walk very easily, correct? But when you are coming in the, your regular times, when your bag is having lot of things, your tiffins, water bottles, lot of books, bag is having more weight. Why? When the bag is having a more things in it, it will apply a gravitational apply force will be more on it. And hence, your body needs to apply a more force on it to carry it. Correct? So, what we have understood from this, greater force must be applied to lift a greater weight. So, children, we have studied in the last lecture that the greater force must be applied to lift a greater weight. By observing the example of this man, while lifting a empty sack, he don't need to apply a greater force. But in the second case, you can observe that to lift a heavy sack, he need to apply a more force. So from that, what we have studied, that the greater force must be applied to lift a greater weight. Now children, Tell me how we weight an object. How we can find out what is the weight of any object. To weigh an object, what we does? We use a spring balance. So to weight an object, we hung the object from a hook of a spring balance. Here you can see what is this? This is a spring balance. Now for what purpose we use this spring balance? 
we use this spring balance to find how much mass of an any object has children now what is the mass mass is nothing but the amount of matter present in any object so to find out how much mass is present in any object we use a spring balance we use it to find out how heavy any object is so how we use it children do you know how to use the spring balance we hung any object to the spring balance when we hung this or attach any object to the hook and then hold the balance in our hand what happens the gravity or the gravitational force pulls the object downward which we have studied already due to the gravitational force the objects are attracted towards the earth so as we are hanging the spring balance in our hand in the air what happens the object which is hung to the hook is attracted towards the earth so gravity pulls the object downward and then we can measure the object children we have studied the greater mass of the object has a the greater weight children if any object has a more mass then it will have a more weight so heavier object is pulled down more so if you attach any brick here instead of a stone what will happen it will it will pull down with a more force right and then what will happen the weight which we will get will be more so what we can understand from that the heavier object has got pulled down more means what they are having a more weight weight of an object is the gravitational force acting on it so children what we have studied from that that weight of an object is the gravitational force acting on it so what we have studied how we are weighing any object by hanging or attaching the object to the hook of a spring balance the suspended object is pulled downward by the force of gravity at the same time the force of the tension in the spring constantly pulls the object upwards the object comes to rest when the tension in the spring and the gravitational force on the object becomes equal in this position the scale on the spring balance shows the gravitational force acting on the object which is the weight of the object the gravitational force on the on an any object is called the weight of that object so children tell me if we weigh any object on earth it will give a same weight on the moon no why because the gravitational force on the different planets are different and hence the mass of an object will remain same anywhere means on all the planets or any other place but it will differ on the place to place if we measure any object on the earth the weight will be shown different and if we will weigh the same object on moon or any other pl other planet it will show a different weight but their mass will remain same students now what are these objects some of you must have played with these objects i had seen some students playing with these objects even in the school they were showing a magic by putting one object underneath the bench and keeping some iron nails or pins above the bench and by moving the object which is behind around underneath the bench we can see that even the pins are moving they now why it happens it happens because of the magnet what are these objects children these are the magnets magnets are found or available in the variety of shapes such as bar magnet horseshoe magnet ring magnet as well as it is available in the various shapes like star heart diamond also these magnets are used for the various purposes especially we use the magnets in the cupboard door or the fridge refrigerator's door 
If you have observed, when we try to close the door of a cupboard or a fridge, after reaching to a certain distance, it gets closed automatically. Why does it happen, children? Because of the magnets placed in nearby the handle. Children, now why it happens? Do you know that there are two poles of all the magnets? The two poles of a magnets are south pole and a north pole. There are certain properties of a magnet such as if you try to keep the south and the south pole near to each other of two magnets, it will not touch to each other. Why it happens? Because the like poles of a magnet always repel. Repel means they will throw away from each other and unlike poles for example means south and the north pole if two different poles of a magnet are kept nearby each other it will attract each other means what like poles of a magnet always repel and the unlike poles of a magnet always attract each other as well as if you have tried that magnets are also attracting the various metals here i had shown one picture where you can see if we place a magnet nearby the iron nails or a pins, what happens? It attracts the pins or the nails. So, if we place a magnet near iron nails, we can observe that iron nails are attracted towards magnet. Why does it happen children? Because of the force exerted by a magnet and this force which is exerted by a magnet is called as a magnetic force. Children, do you know that our earth is also said to be a gigantic magnet because of the magnetic field present around its south and the north pole. Now, let's learn about the next type of force. Children, when we play a carom board, what happens when you apply a force on the striker to hit the coin? The striker and the coin started moving and after certain time it will stop children why the striker and the coin stops after certain time period do you know about it because of the friction takes place between the carom board and the striker and a coin children when any two objects rub against each other the force which takes place is called as a frictional force and the frictional force is always acting against the direction of a motion means what if there is a less friction there will be more motion okay and if there will be a more frictional force there will be a more or less motion means what children if you observe sometimes when the coins of the uh, carom board are not moving what we does we just put the talcum powder on it right why because the talcum powder is very smooth and when we put the talcum powder on the carom board surface we, we observe that when we hit the coin coins are moving very fast why does it happen because of the powder which is put on the carom board surface the frictional force which was there between the coins and the surface of the carom board is reduced and as the frictional force is reduced the motion is increased the motion of the coins or the striker is also increased so children what we have discussed when we are when we are playing a carom board if we hit the coin lightly it slides over the carom board but it stops after certain distance why it happens because there is a friction takes place between the surface of a carom board and the coins and because of that as it acts against the direction of a motion it stops the coin similar thing you must have noticed in case of a bicycle while riding a bicycle when we want to stop at certain place what we have to do before that place only we have to apply the brakes after applying the brakes what happens the bicycle will run at a short distance and it will stop why it happens because the brakes are 
wire is attached to the wheel and when we apply a brake it touches to the wheel and the frictional force takes place between the wheel and the brake wire and hence it stops the bicycle wheel for moving and because of that the bicycle also stop children to understand about the frictional force more we can do one thing you can take some pieces of a smooth paper and rub against each other children what you will understand from that while rubbing two smooth objects on each other it will be moving easily why because there is a less frictional force in between the smooth surface it in but in case of two rough objects if you will take a two rough objects and you try to rub against each other you will find that there is a difficulty in rubbing it on against each other why it happens because of the more friction takes place in between the two rough object so from that what we understood the smooth surfaces can be easily rubbed against each other because the force of friction between them is less while rough surfaces cannot be easily rubbed against each other because the force of friction between them is much greater children you might have seen that some people fall down on a very smooth uh, flooring or on on the wet flooring or sometimes from the uh, skin of a banana or even from the oil why it happens because the skin of a banana or the smooth flooring and your footwear or your foot is a very smooth surface and hence the friction between these two objects are less and when there is very less friction between the two objects motion is more so it is possible for us to walk on the ground only because of the force of friction otherwise what will happen we will we will slip from the floor and we will fall down if there is no frictional force between our foot and the ground and hence always while walking on the smooth flooring or on the wet uh, flooring we have to take care children do you know that sometimes the vehicles are stuck in the mud and to take out that or to remove the wheel of that vehicle from the word mud wooden plank is let down for pulling out the car why we are doing that because a force of friction is generated between the wheel and the wooden plank laid down under the car hence it can be pulled out from the mud very easily in short the force of friction can be either be decreased or increased as per the need children now let us study the next type of force that is electrostatic force children to understand it let's try one experiment what you can do take a small pieces of papers and spread it on the table after that rub a piece of thermocol or a balloon against a silk cloth you can take a balloon and rub it against the silk cloth why we are taking a silk cloth because it is a rough surface and which can create a, a static electricity on a balloon and after that you take the balloon near the piece of paper what you will observe children that the balloon is attracting the pieces of paper towards itself why it happens means what the pieces are getting stick to the balloon why it happens because of the static electricity which is generated on in a balloon it is called as a electrostatic force afterwards you can simply try by rubbing a plastic comb against a dry hair and again take that comb near to the pieces of paper what you will observe that the pieces of papers are sticking to the comb again one more thing you can do rub a peacock feather between two pages of the notebook and bring it near to the fingers what you will see that the pieces of paper peacock feather and your hair 
शो सम मूवमेंट्स ऑल दिस ऑब्जेक्ट्स डेवलप स्टैटिक इलेक्ट्रिसिटी एंड हेंस दिस मूवमेंट इज सीन मूवमेंट मीन्स वॉट यू कैन सी दैट दे आर अट्रैक्टिंग टू दी कोम्ब और टू दी बलून वाई इट इज हैपनिंग बिकॉज ऑफ दी स्टैटिक इलेक्ट्रिसिटी विच इज जनरेट इन जनरेटेड इन दोज ऑब्जेक्ट्स सो फ्रॉम दैट वॉट वी अंडरस्टूड दैट स्टैटिक इलेक्ट्रिसिटी इज प्रोड्यूस्ड ऑन मटेरियल्स लाइक रबर प्लास्टिक एंड एबोनाइट ड्यू टू दी फ्रिक्शन एंड द फोर्स एक्सर्टेड बाय सच इलेक्ट्रिकली चार्ज मटेरियल इज कॉल्ड इलेक्ट्रोस्टैटिक फोर्स आफ्टरवर्ड्स वी विल स्टडी द नेक्स्ट टाइप ऑफ फोर्सेस चिल्ड्रेन combined forces now what are combined forces sometimes to perform certain activities there are various forces are applied till now we had studied muscular force mechanical force gravitational force magnetic force and frictional force and the electrostatic force take one example consider if you are selling a board or uh, on a seesaw or you are sitting in a roller coaster which types of forces are applied in the roller coaster children you must have seen to start the roller coaster first the person is starting the machine right <clears throat> means he has to apply his muscular force on the machine then as because of the machine the roller coaster starts moving means a mechanical force is also applied correct means what there are combined forces can be applied for completing one activity so while in action is taking place various types of forces act on the object in question you might have seen a roller coaster or the juggling of a cell board on the seesaw a variety of forces act together in this cases to obtain more information children you can type a simple word in the google search trick science you will get more tricks about it on a internet children one more example is he given here a little fun to understand about the uh, magnetic force children you can make a game by using a magnets and the fish shaped iron uh, sheets or a plastic sheets which has a iron pin in it okay so what you can do make a cutouts of fish shapes from the colored plastic sheets and fix a pin on one side of the fish you have to uh, make sure that while fixing this pin it should be fr uh, made from the metal such as iron then take a water in the deep big deep plate and release the fish in it they will float on the water why they will float on the water as it is made up of plastic and plastic floats on the water now take a magnet and move it around over the water children what will happen as uh, at the back side of the colored fish we as we have fix a iron pin what will happen the magnet will attract the metallic pin towards itself correct because of the magnetic force so you can uh, make such a simple games by using this various forces so what we have studied in this lesson children that a force is required to bring about any action children we have studied that for any action for any movement there is a certain kind of a force need to be applied for example a muscular force or a mechanical force magnetic force any kind of a force needs to be applied for any kind of a movement or a action force is necessary for making an object move to change the direction of motion and also to change the shape of an object then then we have studied there are various types of forces such as muscular force mechanical force gravitational force magnetic force frictional force and a electrostatic force so this is all we have studied in this lesson